Welcome back to the channel guys. So today we're going to be doing a fun comparison. We're going to be comparing the Google Pixel 8 to the brand new Samsung Galaxy S24. We're going to be seeing and talking about the specs of these guys, the cameras, some camera samples on here, uh, putting these guys side by side with some display comparisons and maybe throw in a little bit of a speaker comparison as well in there too. So we're going to be comparing these two guys up against each other because I think that they would be an excellent match. They're both the same size, pretty much the same specs, eight gigabytes of RAM, etc. If you're here for the first time, welcome to Sick Eric Tech. I do a lot of comparison videos like this and consider subscribing. I would really, really appreciate that. And that way you don't miss out on other comparison videos with the S24 and other devices. So let's go ahead and jump then into a Google Pixel 8 versus the Samsung Galaxy S24. Let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and jump down into this comparison. So we got the Google Pixel 8 versus the Galaxy S24. So very excited about this. So going on over to the dimensions, let's go ahead and start off with the Galaxy. And we get a 5.79 inches tall, 2.78 inches wide, and 0.3 inches thin. So a very nice, comfortable design with these flat edges and the flat back just like an iphone so i think samsung is definitely copying iphone's design but it does feel real good in the hands it is very manageable and very small you do get a gorilla glass victus 2 on the front and on the back with the armor aluminum 2 frame which is supposed to be tougher against drops and it is ip68 dust and water resistance water up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes so very fantastic, very nicely built, very nicely done with this matte finish on the back. This is how you do a glass finish, guys. Matte finish, matte sides. This thing looks beautiful. Going on over to the Pixel 8 over here, you get 5.93 inches tall, 2.79 inches wide, and 0.35 inches thin. So it is a little bit thicker than the Galaxy, pretty much mainly on that camera bump and the frame as well just a little bit thicker and um, it comes in at about 6.60 ounces the galaxy was 5.89 i don't know if i mentioned that but the galaxy is a little bit lighter than the pixel and you could definitely feel that in the hand the pixel may have a little bit more comfortable edges on here with the curvedness on the back and that smoothness sort of feels like a little pebble compared to the Galaxy, but I do not like this glass back. It is Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and on the back, but it is glossy. Definitely a fingerprint magnet when it comes down to the Pixel. IP68 as well. Again, up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. Both of these do have in-display fingerprint sensors. The Galaxy is going to be an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor while the Pixel is a optical. And as far as the speed goes, the Galaxy might be a little quicker than the Pixel, but the Pixel has definitely improved over time, especially coming from the Google Pixel 6. That thing was horrible. As you can see, the Galaxy is a little bit quicker when it comes down to just resting your fingerprint on there. But the, actually, the Pixel is actually doing pretty good as well. So. Both in-display fingerprint sensors, I would say that the Galaxy just a little bit more secure because it is an ultrasonic rather than just, you know, taking a picture of your fingerprint like you do on the Pixel. Going on over to the display. So the Pixel does have a 6.2 inch OLED display, comes in at 120 hertz, supports HDR10+, does have a peak brightness of 2000 nits. This thing is bright. It does have a resolution of 1080 by 2400 with 428 pixels per inch. Like I said earlier, covered in Corning Gorilla Glass Victus. You do get an always on display, which is highly customizable over here. So if you're going into your customizations, you do have so many different options for clocks and colors to change on the pixels. So Google is definitely giving us a lot more customization this time around with customizing your lock screen and your wallpapers and your color. So that is fan fantastic for the pixel going on over to the galaxy it is a 6.2 inch dynamic ltpo amoled display does support 120 hertz and hdr 10 plus but this thing gets up to 2600 nits peak brightness and you definitely can tell this when out 
outdoors. This display is bright. Both of them are really bright and good outdoors, so no issues reading them in direct sunlight, but the Galaxy is going to get a little bit brighter than the Google Pixel. Has a resolution of 1080 by 2340, and it has, and it has 416 pixels per inch, covered in Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2, and you also do get an always-on display on here, which is also highly customizable. You can control whether or not you see the whole wallpaper or just a part of the wallpaper on your long screen. You can control your clock and your different clock styles and things like that. So you get a lot of different options for some widgets on here as well, which the Pixel does not offer any widget support on their lock screen. So as far as displays go, I would say the Galaxy definitely coming in a little bit more of a head, but I would say just because the Galaxy has those issues with the with the vivid setting not being activated on here colors still look great but they're not as punchy as past galaxy devices so things are going to look a little bit less vibrant on the galaxy but it's not that much of a difference you definitely won't notice it when watching videos so in that case it's kind of hard to say since no software update has come out for the galaxy well tons have come out for the pixel already so it's kind of a draw on display you guys tell me which one you might think looks better so both of these devices are running android 14 out of the box you get samsung's one ui 6.1 over here you get android 14 on the pixel you get the google tensor g3 on the pixel with the immortalis g7 15s mc10 gpu 8 gigabytes of RAM, this is the 128 variant. It can go up to 256, by the way. Over here on the Galaxy, you get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. This particular variant is a 256 variant, can go all the way up to 512. 128 gig, uh, variant will only have UFS 3.1. Anything higher than that will have 4.0. So I don't know why they did that, kind of lame, but it is what it is. So as far as performance goes on both of these guys, I think the Galaxy is a little bit more of a powerhouse than the Pixel, just because it has that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, while the Pixel with that sensor is not really built on you know, performance, it's built on efficiency and all the AI. Now, while the Galaxy does have AI as well, like I said, I think the Galaxy is more of a powerhouse when it comes down to playing games and editing video, and the Pixel is more of an easygoing, type of thing it would, you still will handle playing games and editing video on here but i think that it's more efficiency over here is what google is going for while on the galaxy it's more of a very very powerful get things done with that snapdragon 8 gen 3 so it depends on what you do on your phone if you're scrolling social media and taking pictures and video and editing them or anything like that playing games you'll be fine on both of these to be honest but i think the um galaxy would do just a little bit better when it comes down to the performance going on over to the cameras so the galaxy has three cameras on the rear you get a main sensor of 50 megapixels with an aperture of f1.8 you do get dual pixel pdaf and optical image stabilization so that's fantastic 10 megapixel telephoto lens with an aperture of f2.2 does support ois as well with three times optical zoom on there Finally, you get your 12 megapixel ultra wide aperture of f2.2 with a 120 degree field of view. It does have super steady video, so that's fantastic. You can record up to 8K, 24 and 30 frames per second, along with your 4K, 30 and 60 on the Galaxy S24. Going on over to the Pixel 8 over here, you get two cameras on the rear. Main sensor is the 50 megapixel main sensor aperture of f1.7 does support multi-directional PDAF, laser autofocus, and optical image stabilization. Secondary camera is your ultra-wide 12 megapixels f2.2, 126 degree field of view, so you get a wider, a wider field of view with that ultra-wide. And you can record up to 4K, 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. Front-facing cameras on these guys. Galaxy is going to be a 12 megapixel front-facing camera. With an aperture of f2.2, does support PDAF. You can record up to 4K 30 and 60 frames per second, and it does support HDR10. 
plus the pixel over here, 10.5 megapixel, aperture of f2.2, and it does support PDAF as well. Can record up to 4K, 24, 30, and 60 frames per second on these front-facing cameras. So as far as camera quality goes, it's kind of a draw. Um, both of these pictures and video are definitely different. The Galaxy tends to overexpose the background, especially on this front facing camera, while the Pixel keeps things in line and looks very good with video. But in some cases, portrait shots on the Galaxy look a little better than they do on the Pixel when it comes down to portrait rear shots on that rear facing camera. But we all know Pixels take the best shots, so you, let's go ahead and take a look at some video and some photos taken on both of these side by side. That way you guys can get an idea of the photo quality and video quality of the Pixel 8 and the Galaxy S24. So here's front facing camera, 4K, 60 frames per second, Google Pixel 8 versus the Samsung Galaxy S24. That is a handling light in the background. So far, it looks like the S24 is struggling with that background light. And yeah, there we go. Let's continue on with the video, shall we? Okay, so here is front-facing footage, Google Pixel 8, 4K, 60 frames per second. You know how it's handling the background, and let's go ahead and go on over to the Galaxy S24, shall we? And here is the Galaxy S24 in auto mode, and notice a difference in the background. Totally blown out, so hopefully this gets fixed with a software update, but compared to the Pixel 8, it's got no chance. All right, so what did you think of the photos and videos? I think the pictures go back and forth when it comes down to the quality, especially in portrait video, front-facing camera. Pixel definitely takes the cake. Samsung Galaxy S24 has not had any updates, so I'm hoping that that brightness level tends to go down when it comes down to getting an update for that camera and for the actual phone. So it's kind of hard to say which one wins here the pixels had a whole bunch of updates while the galaxy has had none so there's still time to change and to fix those brightness issues when it comes down to video and photography on the galaxy s24 but let me know in the comments which one took the best shots and which one took the best video now both of these do have stereo speakers the galaxy does have stereo speakers you get one bottom firing speaker and one up here at the top you do get dolby atmos on the samsung with auto movie music and voice and you do get a whole bunch of other different options when it comes down to your equalizer and things like that adapt sound while over here on the pixel you don't really get any options when it comes down to customization no dolby atmos no nothing so let's go ahead and hear a sample of the speakers on both of these that way you guys get an idea of how each one sounds
So what did you guys think of the speaker quality on both of these? I think they both sound really good. The Samsung gives you a little bit more options when it comes down to equalization. So it might sound just a little bit better than the Pixel, but comment down below which one sounded better to you guys. You get Bluetooth 5.3 on both of these, so that's fantastic. You get Wi-Fi 6E on the Galaxy S24, while on the Pixel you get Wi-Fi 7. And you get USB Type-C 3.2 on both of these as well. Now going on over to the battery, the Pixel does have the larger battery of 4575 milliamp hours. You get 27 watt wire charging and 18 watt wireless charging while on the galaxy you get a 4000 milliamp hour battery with 25 watt wired and 15 watt wireless with 4.5 watt reverse wireless charging on here as well so that's fantastic so as far as battery life goes even though the pixel does have a larger capacity battery i would say the galaxy maybe outlast it by just maybe an hour or less give or take so even though their difference in batteries the snapdragon 8 gen 3 is a very efficient processor so you're gonna get a little bit more battery life but it depends on your usage if you're playing games all day shooting video you know things like that of course your phone's gonna die but both of these are definitely full day devices and charge at the end of the night and that's with all your settings you know activated on here all your features nothing dialed down to save battery both of these devices going at their full potential definitely full day uh, devices and for me that's perfectly fine as long as i don't have to dial down features and turn things off in order to get a full day i'm fine with that so like i said usage may vary between you know different people some people might not use your device a lot some people play games all day it just depends you can't get a real accurate exact screen on time it all depends on you and what you do on your phone and for me all day devices fine in my book for these devices so the pixel did come in obsidian hazel and rose this is the hazel color so sort of a nice green almost like an army khaki green or gray on the back. It does have glossy finish, so I do not like that. I do like the camera visor, but it does tend to get a little bit scratched up, as you can see right here. Have a little nick, so very annoying to have little nicks on there. Other than that, the device is held up over all this time, and I think it's held up pretty well when it comes down to scratches. While over here in the Galaxy, uh, the colors were onyx black, marble gray, cobalt, violet, amber yellow, jade green, sandstone orange, and sapphire blue. Some of those were exclusive colors. This particular model is the marble gray color, and I think it looks fantastic, way better with this matte finish on the back and this nice silver trim going along the side. The silver trim is a little bit glossier than the pixels. So it may pick up a little bit more fingerprints than the Pixel, but it's really not that bad. The back, definitely way better in fingerprint resisting on the back, so that's fantastic. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparison between the Galaxy S24 and the Google Pixel 8. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That is quite all right. And I will see you next time here on Sick Eric Tech. Peace.